Researchers use tiny lab-grown human brains to operate a dog bot and give it sensory feedback. This technology may provide a foundation for biohybrid robotics, as well as allow us to interface with our neurons directly so that we can have sensory feedback. Now, piloting a dog bot is not the central point of the paper, but I think it's really cool. Brain organoids are being used to run simulations like this in which they have to navigate because it gives us information about how brains function. If you wanted to study Alzheimer's, for example, if it degraded and failed to run Dogbot, that could be an indication. Now, normally in this field, if they wanted to do something like this, they would need something called opsin genetics. They've implanted tiny human brains that have been genetically engineered to react when light is shined on them, so they have a way to control them. In the case of Dogbot, they didn't require that. No, they grew brain organoids directly onto a layer of graphene. And graphene is unique because it can take signals and turn them directly into information that a neuron can read. So they can be directly interfaced. Now, technology like this has been used to give robots sensation, like taste, because it can take sensory feedback and turn it directly into electrical activity. And of course, it could be used to give robots a very high resolution sense of touch. That is important for you know, having robots that are able to interact with the world, but it could also be used for prosthetics, but also robots that could interact with the world. Like Puppy Pi 4 that was used in the UC San Diego lab. This is a commercially available robot, and they're not that expensive, and I am seriously thinking of getting one. They use LIDAR, so as it approaches an obstacle, it sends that information back to the brain organoid, it's filtered, and then that brain organoid can then respond to it. And they do learn. We are seeing a robot that has sensation. It has been claimed that the brain organoids are sentient because they're capable of having an experience. They can be taught on ordered and disordered signals. They like order. I've even seen papers and talked about papers in which they're given continuous electric shocks till they do what they want them to do in Pac-Man. They seem to do better, just from what I've read, when they're given both positive reinforcement, so ordered signals and dopamine bursts, as well as negative reinforcement rather than just one or the other, but they can learn on them, one or the other. This kind of technology is so important in several different areas. It's great for medical research. If we can see how a brain is reacting to spatial environments, it unlocks a whole new area of studying people. You know, people that are not in a human body. Traditional LLM, they're just not good with spatial information. They're not good at operating a body in the world, especially not a soft body. But brain organoids can, even neuromorphic brain organoids that are just programmed and not actually physical are better at operating in three dimensions. It gives us an interface for which we could use for our own medicine. Think robotic eyes, think robotic tongues is apparently possible, and of course limbs that have a real sense of touch. And of course, you know me, I'm hoping for conscious machines. I don't think it's a good idea to make conscious machines, but I do think it's possible and I kind of want to see it happen. I know that's not very responsible of me.